Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is your girl Marlena. Um, today we will be talking about, as you guys can see by the title, my PCOS story. Now, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a physician, I'm not, you know, anybody that can really tell you if this is what you have or, you know, tell you how to deal with it, tell you what you need to take. That is disclaimer, that's not me, that's not what I'm trying to tell you how to do or what to do. This is just me telling you and letting you guys know what my story is, how I deal with it, the things that I have to do for it, and things like that. So hopefully you guys enjoy this and let's get right into the video. So, so firstly, um, this is, I'm going to be completely honest and tell you guys 100% what it is and how it affects me. But first, let's start off by telling you a little bit about it. So, PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, is an imbalance of female sex hormones. Um, it affects 1 in 5, no, 1 in 15 fe women, females, which is kind of crazy, right? Because I don't know about you guys, but I honestly never heard of it growing up. I did not know it existed. I did not know what it was. I, I had no clue it was even able to, I was even going to have it or anything like that. So, um, to, for it to affect 1 in 15, that is not, that's not a very high number. Like, that is, that is pretty low. That is, that means somebody, like, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only person in my family who has this. That's how, that's how crazy and high the, the ratios are. Um, well, PCOS, like I said, it's an imbalance of female sex hormones, and it changes your estrogen and progesterone, um, along with all kinds of other things. But those are the two main things that it changes. Um, and these hormones, they're female hormones that release the eggs for you to ovulate, um, which if you don't ovulate, you're not releasing your eggs. If you don't release eggs, they're, so it causes infertility. Okay, some of the symptoms are um, the change in menstrual cycle. Some women get no periods at all, and some can get nine periods. I heard that's like about the average of women with PCOS. They get nine periods a year. Um, acne, your acne gets worse. Your, your, you get extra hair. I, I know I'm a slur this word, but um, it's heritism, heritism, something like that. And I always... I can never pronounce that word, so I apologize now, and I'm sure somebody's going to correct me, but, um, and what's that, what that means is that you get extra hair on your face, you can get it on your hands, you can get it on your arms, your legs, your, you know, all over your body, pretty much. Um, you gain weight, it, it causes you to, to gain weight, and it gives you trouble trying to lose it. So you'll have more trouble than your average person to lose the weight. Um, another thing is thinning of the hair, um, hair fallout, things of that sort is common with PCOS. Fertility problems, which we already discussed, is one of the hugest um, problems or symptoms to, or side effects, no, they're symptoms for PCOS and depression. Um, the PCLS causes this to grow on your ovaries, and pretty much, so it's like the cysts grow on your ovaries, and I'm going to try to insert a picture somewhere on here to show you what a normal ovary looks like and what a cystic ovary or an ovary with cysts on it looks like, and what, what the doctor has explained to me was that when we ovulate, and, okay, we all know that the eggs come out of the ovaries and down the fallopian tube. So, in, the, in, the, in a normal woman, the eggs would come out, the, they would, you know, glide down the fallopian tube and into the cervix, right? Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> and then, um, but when you have PCOS, the egg form, the, the eggs don't fully mature. For you ovulate and if by any chance you do depending on how many cysts you have and how bad your PCOS is if you're if you're like me my PCOS PCOS is bad it's extremely bad and um, 
with me if I by any chance get an ovary I mean um, an egg to fully mature in my ovaries and to come out down the fallopian tube my cysts gobble it up that's pretty much what it is and the cysts prevent it from you know going down the course <laughs> that it's supposed to go on every woman but so that's pretty much a summary of what PCOS is. And I'm sure there's like a million more things you can learn. And if you have any more questions, you can ask me. Feel free to ask me. And I'll do my best to do my research and help you guys out. Or tell you guys, you know, my experiences with it or whatever. But um, that is pretty much just a summary of what the word PCOS means. So now I'm going to tell you guys my PCOS story. Well, I was and I was diagnosed with PCOS in 2010, and um, it was at first I had no idea what PCOS is, and this is why I moved to Texas with my dad. And um, I knew I had gone to the doctor for a check checkup, and I knew something like I've always known since I was little. I knew something was wrong. I felt. I remember telling my mom, oh, I feel depressed, I don't feel right, like something's not right. And it was just, to me, it was a lot, my depression was a lot more than your average fit throwing. And I mean, I didn't feel that way. I didn't feel like it was just for a moment. Sometimes I'd be depressed over pretty much anything and everything. But, um, so I knew I had, I, I had, I suffered with depression. I just didn't know what it was or how it affected me or anything. Um, I went to the doctor's for a checkup when I moved to Texas with my dad, and I was talking to them, and she was, I don't remember her name anymore, but she was a really nice lady. She helped me. She talked to me. Um, we did everything we did, and then she's like, she told me, so what's going on with you? Tell me a little bit about how you've been living and this and that. And I explained to her that, um, you know, I try to lose weight, and I, I've never been able to lose the weight, and that um, I don't get my period, you know, all the time, that... I get it maybe four at the max five times a year and that's it. Um, but I told her, you know, I just explained to her how everything was and what everything was about me and she said I remember she looked at me and she was like kinda like sad to tell me or something. She just didn't look like all too happy to um explain to me. So I remember she walked out the door and then she was like, Okay, we're gonna do a um you know, um What's it called? A pap smear? <laughs> I'm going to do a pap smear and make sure, you know, everything's working, functioning correctly. And I said, okay. So she came in, she did the pap smear, she, um, you know, checked me. She went into her office, came back with some papers, and she's like, okay, um, well, what I think you have is PCOS. And I was like, what's that? Like, what are you talking about? You know, I'm like, uh, you know, you gotta tell me a little bit more of what, what you're talking about. And um, she's like, okay, well, PCOS is so, so, and so. She started explaining it to me little by little, and she started to tell me the symptoms. Now, as she read the, the list, down the list of symptoms, like, I seriously in my mind was like a checklist. Oh, yep, got it, got it, got it, yep, got it, got it. And then it's like, every single thing she hit was something that I had. And I just, I was like, I have it. What else can I say? And I think when she first told me, I kind of, I kind of was surprised. Just because every time I've gone to the doctor, I've always been a big girl. And I've gone to the doctors and they've always told me everything's fine. You know, your blood levels come back high, fine. Your sugar's fine. Your cholesterol's fine. Your, high pre your pressure's fine. Blood pressure is fine. Everything is fine. You don't have thyroid. You don't have this. You don't have that. So I've always been a big girl, but a healthy big girl. And um, so I was kind of like, you know, take it back. Like, what are you talking about? Like, this can't be right. Even though in the checklist, you know, you kind of go through the denial. Like, like, I'm sick. Like, that's how I felt. I remember that night I went home. Well, that day I went home. And my dad's like, well, what did they tell you? And I said, and I pulled out the papers, and I wasn't really like, you know, I was feeling kind of down or whatever because of my diagnosis. 
And I was like, well, they said I have PCOS. And he's like, what's that? So I tried to explain it to him. And then I remember going into my bedroom. So I talked to him for a little. He said, don't worry, we're going to take care of it. And, you know, you need to go to the doctors and make sure everything's fine. And I told him I have to go get an ultrasound um, on, you know, everything on my ovaries to make sure everything's okay. Um, and he's like, okay, you know, we'll do that. You know, whatever you have to do to, you know, get back on track and get healthy, we'll do that. So I said, okay. I remember walking into my bedroom and I literally bawled. I bawled the whole night. Like, uh, I just, I don't know. I bawled. And I guess what initially started me like crying and I just like I couldn't I didn't understand why like why why did I have it when everything else is fine like why I I couldn't I couldn't say why I couldn't tell you guys why I can't I mean I remember I was really depressed and then so that was just initially when I, I was told I had to do it now I'm like wiping away my tears and I'm looking at the papers that the doctor handed me and I'm reading it you know looking it up and then for some reason I'm like okay let me google PCOS I googled PCOS and one of the things that popped up was PCOS infertility or or PCOS I think it's something like PCOS one, uh, one of the main infertility reasons for women is PCOS, something like that. And, yeah, I know, I'm a crybaby already, so I just tears, 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 tears. I remember at this point, I was living with my dad only, and um, we live in Texas, and in Texas, it's just me, my dad, and my little sister. That's the only family I had. I had recently moved to Texas, so I didn't really have any, like, really good friends. I didn't have... You know, I had my husband I actually talked to, but I weren't like BFFs or like, we didn't talk like that. And um, I just cried. And I wanted nothing more than to be my mom. I remember that. I just cried and I cried and I wanted to be home and I wanted to go with my mom and that's all I wanted. And because she was in California and I was in Texas, it was hard for me to deal with. Um, I remember I, that night was the hardest night for me. Uh, I pretty much cried myself to sleep, and I, I just, it's hard to even think back on it that, you know, I went through that. I don't think I really told anybody, and so this is probably the first time I say something. Um, so then after that happened, we went, and I continued to go and get treatment. When I went to the doctor, the second time before my ultrasound, the doctor put me on metformin. Metformin is supposed to help. I've heard that it's um, supposed to help. It's a type 2 diabetes pill, and it's supposed to help, um, you know. What the doctor told me was going to help me regulate myself. It's going to help me lose weight. It's going to help me do this. It's going to help me do that. Like, I'm like a wonder pill, and for me to take it, and that it would help. And I was like, okay, we'll do that. Well, well, you know, I'll take it. So I continued to take it, and um, I went to my ultrasound. I remember at my ultrasound, I got, um, you know, they checked my ovaries, and they said, okay, your ovaries are pretty covered up. They're pretty much covered up in cysts. You have cysts all over your ovaries. And the, the doctor told me, after that, the doctor told me that they had to continue to check my cysts and continue to... Um, you know, be updated just to make sure that my cysts don't grow or explode or, you know, pop or whatever the term of that is. But that's what they told me I have to do. So um, now I'm on PCOS. I mean, sorry. Now I'm on metformin, and I'm taking it for that. Um, and my life with PCOS, it's, it's hard because I do, these are the things that I do deal with. I do have thinning of my hair. My hair is, I'm pretty sure you guys can tell, and this is, like I said, I'm being like completely percent honest. Um, I don't know if you can really tell, but it is super thin, like, 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 this is all my hair. My hair is 
so thin and um, it falls out like crazy. And there's times where I've been in the shower and I've been like combing my hair out and like, you know, running my hands through it and there's like balls of hair in my hair. And it's, I mean, a woman's hair is pretty much what like defines, not defines you, but you know, it's, it's who you are. It's like your face features, it's your nose, it's your lips, it's part of you. So for me to start losing my hair was, it is an extremely hard thing and then it's depressing that, you know, you, can, you can't deal with it and it is what it is and you pretty much have to, well, you pretty much have to take it how it comes and it's hard and I mean, something that I've done to deal with my PCOS or oh, with my hair thinning and and, um, you know, falling out is in this little bag, my Mac bag. And it's just beautiful. How to accept your girlfriend. Yeah, you know, this is something, I mean, it's not for everybody. And I know people are like, oh my God, it's just hair. Well, it's not just hair, it's me, honey. I love, 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 long hair. My husband loves long hair. So, you know, I go ahead. I went and bought me these extensions. Actually, my first pair of extensions, I bought them like two years ago. And, like, no, like last year. <laughs> I bought them like last year in March, my first pair of extensions. And they were from Sally's. Those, and I've tried so many since then, but those and these are like the best hair extensions I've ever tried. They're super light, they clip onto my hair, and I'm like, my hair is already thin enough that I do not want to like risk pulling my hair out. So those were amazing. Um, and I think I already paid like one. 30 maybe 120 maybe less um for the 18 inch of those and i love them i like i really want some more of those um so those are the like the first extensions i bought and you know you can do anything to these extensions i've dyed them i've made them blonde no i started with them blonde and i dyed them dark when i went dark and um they're great. It's just like hair. Like, seriously, boo-boo, you, you can't even tell. Like, if I was to have this other hair, really, y'all gonna be with her? I know people think, like, it's crazy, but I love making my hair extensions. Like, and these are from Irresistible Me. I'll probably put a link on down below so you guys can check them out. They usually have some really, really great deals. And um, this is the 20-inch, I believe. And so this is one of the things that I did to help with the volume in my hair, you know, to make me feel better. I mean, I don't need it. My husband could care less if I put him on, but this is just what I do to help me, you know, you know, feel a little bit better about yourself. You know, your hair's falling out, you got to look cute. Another thing I did was I pretty much put my heart and soul into makeup. And because what I found was when I was chilling, doing nothing, and kicking back and it was quiet and I was on myself that began to run my mind was running on like if it was on crack or something like I would think about everything like why do I have this why am I depressed why why this why that and I had to do something to get myself preoccupied and become busy and you know do what I had to do to um, make myself feel better and at that time I was going to school for a medical system and I, I already have my certificate in that. But it was my time with medical assistant was always for it to be a you know, a, a backup. And for me to do what I wanted to do and but I always have that to fall back on if you know times out hard. Um, for whatever case. And so I started doing my gym. I remember one of the first people or persons that I did makeup for was um, the actual like makeup gig was for one of my friends, um, Kimberly, back in Texas. It was her high school prom and she was all excited and I remember oh, we had like the hardest time because if you guys live in Texas or if you've been to Texas, you know how humid it is and oh, you know, bless her heart, but she has really, really curly hair, like super, super curly hair and 
we had like trouble trying to get you know trying to you know get her curls to go a certain way but it was so much fun doing her you know getting her all glammed up i also went to i remember i went to dinner with them and um you know we had a very very good time and i love her i love you kimberly if you ever watch this i miss you and i miss your family and you know i miss everybody from church and hi um but anyways um so i did that um another thing that i do uh because i do have the hair season so I do grow facial hair and I know this is like oh my god why are you saying this but don't, don't try to apply me boo boo because I know most of the females grow a little stash dash and I mean that's pretty much normal so with me just growing facial hair it's embarrassing I'm not gonna lie I'm not gonna tell you this is like peaches and roses and you know it's all good no 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 I absolutely hate it so I pretty much wax my face um, when I go to my hairstylist, she waxes me down, and, uh, I found that waxing is the best option because if you shave, um, it's just going to grow it thicker, and it's going to grow more. So, wax, 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 and I afford to go and get a laser hair removal, and everything is just going to be gone. So, that's, that's where I'm leaning towards. Um, let me see. My acne. I break out, okay, I don't have super bad acne, let me see if I can get close up. I don't have like super bad acne, like you can see a little bit here, a little bit above my lip and stuff. But it's not like, oh my god, you know, I'm breaking out all over. No, but I do get little bumps like across my, my eyebrows and stuff. And then usually like right here is where I tend to break out the most and down here in this area, like closer to my hair. Like, and then, um, sometimes I break out here. So I do break out from time to time. It's just not, I mean, it's not as bad as I've seen it, but I do, you know, break out. So my skin is not in the best condition, and I do have a lot of um, scarring. Maybe I'll do a video when you guys can see my actual scars and stuff from the acne, when I'm not caked up and have all this makeup on. <laughs> but, um, we do... I do have acne and pretty much just um, the only thing you can do for that is wash your face and you know make sure your hygiene's good and you know make sure you you if you do wear makeup make sure you take it off like do not sleep with your makeup do not leave it on just because all your makeup is going to sink into your skin and it's just going to make you break out even more. My menstrual cycle comes when it wants to come pretty much. I can have, I can go like two, three months where it's just every, every month, you know, routinely, monthly, 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 and then it stops for four or five months. I can go three months without having it, one month, yes, three months without having it, one month, yes, one month, yes, three months again, no. I can go, I can, it's just, I never know when it's going to happen. Um, but the only good thing about that is that Luckily, every time it does start, it's usually during the night. So that's the only reason or way I deal with it. And but I, I tend to always keep at least a tampon or a pad with me at all times. I know it's my TMI, but um, that's the truth. I keep it with me, and I make sure you know the girl got the back up, and make sure she's taken care of, just in case of anything decides to pop down. Um, PCOS also causes depression and bipolar tendencies. Now, let me tell you guys about my depression and my bipolar tendencies. Y'all ready for this? Okay. I am one of the sweetest, nicest persons in the world. I, I can, I love helping people. I am, you know, I will, I, I love my friends. Like, I love being there for them. And I know that I'm, I know that they know that they can count on me for whatever and whenever. I'm that type of person, but I'm overprotective, like, oh my god, you guys don't even know. I'm the kind of girl that if you, if we go to the club, and I'm hanging out with my friends, and a random person comes up and disrespects one of my friends, disrespects our group, I snap, and I go off. That's just too bad. I do not like it. I've learned with time 
to control it and to walk away because, you know, I'm a baby now, so um, I can go to jail. <laughs> so I tried to, like, you know, let me turn around and walk away before I stab you. And I'm sorry, that's like TMI, that's, you know, cray cray man, but that's just the truth. I, my patience varies from day to day. If I'm already annoyed and I'm already irritated and somebody just keeps, something as simple as tapping your hand, talking in my ear, snapping your finger, clicking a pin, something as simple as that can like crunch me over the edge and I'm like gone and yelling and screaming and you know, being crazy. And I try to control it to the best of my ability but it just happens and I try to do what I can with it but it is what it is. I mean, I am who I am. And um, so far, my friends love me. <laughs> and my husband loves me. So um, I don't think it's too bad because I'm not a loner, you know, by myself. But that is the case. Um, and my depression gets so bad. Like, I cry just as fast as I can, like, go from 0 to 100 in my anger scale, I can go from like 100 to 0 in my like happy scale. So I can be, I cry for everything. I'm not even going to lie. I can be watching a movie and I cry. Um, I can see a happy story and I cry. I can see a dad and a son together and just being all of you and I cry. I, I cry. I'm a crier. I cry for everything and everything. And I can't do anything about it. And so not only do I cry a lot, but I get sad. And I get, like, not just regular sad, I'm mm, no. I get, like, I'm just so depressed and I'm just, I don't understand anything. And it's, it's something hard to deal with. And something that I know my close friends know about me and a lot of people that I know know about me is that I can't, I keep, my life, my personal life to myself. So a lot of my friends don't know when I'm hurting. A lot of my friends don't know. I don't think any of my friends know, except for my husband, um, know that I'm going through things. Nobody knows what I deal with because I keep that stuff bottled up. And I know it's not the best thing to do, but it's just what I do. And I know that, we like, recently I had gone to the doctors and they told me, you know, some things were going on and some things were wrong and I broke down. I seriously did not know what was happening. I couldn't talk to my husband. I cried and I cried and I cried. I asked God why. I prayed and I couldn't take it anymore. All I could do was message my friends and I contacted four of my really, really great friends. and. Three of them are like my sisters. Well, all four of them are like my sisters. But three of them are close to me and um, not like friendship-wise, but they're, they live nearby. So um, I called them three and my, I, I text them three and my four friends who live um, in the Bay Area. So I contacted my friends and I was telling them, you know what, this is just too much for me to deal with on my own. I really need you guys. I, don't know what to do, and after talking to them, you know, texting them back and forth, all my friends, they all encouraged me, they all, you know, told me, um, you know, we're, we'll get through it together, and they all helped me, and, you know, uh, that's one of the things that you have to have when, when you have PCOS, you have to have a really, really good support system, and even though I know it's hard to, you know, say things or to share parts of your life, you have to have that group of people that will, or that one person that you can talk to and you can tell them anything and know that they're not going to judge you and they're just going to be there and they're going to help you. And that's really what I had to turn to this last time that I gone to the doctors and, you know, they informed me of what was going on. Um, and my friends are amazing. They're a blessing from God. They're uh, understanding. They're supportive. They're, you know, they're, they're willing to, they're, they're my sisters. They're there for me, and they're, they're helping me get through this. And I know that a lot of times what I do is I shut out people, and I 
tend to like close my door on things and just like brush it under the rug and just keep moving forward with this happy smile on my face, you know, faking it and pushing forward with, you know, things that are still bothering me. But because I am such a strong-headed person and such a person that doesn't like to look weak in front of anybody, um, I keep things to myself. I feel like if I'm, I feel at times that if I tell a certain person something or if I go and, you know, um, let somebody in on my situation, that it's, I feel like I'm going to be laughed at. I feel like I'm going to, you know, be like, oh, well, what are you supposed to do about it? Well, you know, um, thrown in my face. And I just don't like that. So I'd rather keep things to myself, and that's really not, I do not recommend you do that. And, you know, just talk to somebody. That's the only thing you can do with depression. Um, if anybody has any questions, um, I pretty much covered all my symptoms and things that I do to, you know, to deal with things. Um, but my case is severe. Um, I know one thing I didn't talk about was my infertility. I've already been told that if I want to have children that there's different things that I have to do in order to accomplish that. But right now I'm on the road to try to make myself healthier and try to get myself, um, you know, I've, I've been taking new medication, I'm trying new things, um, I have my support system behind me and they're helping me and, you know, we're starting a new workout routine and, you know, praying to God that something helps me lose the weight that I need to lose because it's just been an impossible task to do on my own. So, um, you know, I am working on, on myself and that's all I can do is work on myself and try to make myself better and healthier and that's pretty much what I'm doing. And but so that's pretty much my PCOS story and I hope you guys like this and enjoy this. My camera's about to cut off, <laughs> so I'm trying to wrap it up. But um if you have any questions, if you feel like you need um, you know, if you're struggling through this, if you're going through PCOS you can always send me a message down below or comment and let me know and I'll do everything I can to, you know, help you and tell you um, anything I can to make you feel better or what I'm going through or what I'm dealing with to deal with it. Um, and if not, you guys can always add me on my Facebook or contact me through Facebook. Most of my friends, you guys know. Um, if not, you know, I'll see you guys in the next video. So again, I hope you guys like this and I hope you guys have a blessed day. And again, this is just my story, my truth, and my PCSA. Uh, but I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.